a chemotherapy-free treatment option known as dual immunotherapy may be on the cards for patients with recurrent or spreading nasopharyngeal cancer, more commonly known as nose and throat cancer. Researchers from the National Cancer Center Singapore found the treatment method to be effective in the second phase of clinical trials. Their study also found that patients with lower levels of Epstein-Barr virus DNA, that's a virus associated with nose and throat cancer, had better response and progression-free survival. And for more on this, we're joined by the lead author of that study, Associate Professor Darren Lim. He's Senior Consultant at the Cancer Center Singapore. Let's start with a deceptively simple question, uh, Prof Lim. Uh, first, chemotherapy, it's an indiscriminate killing of cancer cells. Uh, but dual immunotherapy is different from that. It has its advantages. What would immunotherapy be and how is it of greater benefit to patients as compared to patients undergoing chemotherapy? Right. Um, thanks for having me here tonight. Um, dual immunotherapy as... Um the term connotes, uses two different immunotherapies to target um, and, and enroll the human immune system to recognize and to then uh, come to destroy the cancer cells. Um, it is different from chemotherapy in the sense that there is no direct uh, cell to cell killing from, chem from chemical compounds, as an example, but it uses uh, the body's own immune system to uh, get rid of the cancer. Mm. Let's talk about the dual immunotherapy treatment in reference to Epstein-Barr, uh, which we referenced earlier in the introduction to this, which it affects over 90% of the world's population. Only certain people uh, sort of are susceptible to it. Is it genetically driven or it has it to do with lifestyle? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic question. And I think that's a question which a lot of us are trying to address. Um, there are several factors which have been historically associated with this. Uh, one is um, dietary factors. For example, salted fish from very early on had been described as a, an associated risk factor for development of nasopharyngeal cancer. But also, we also know that in although 90% of the world's population may be infected with uh, Epstein-Barr virus, a very small proportion of patients would then develop nasopharyngeal cancer, and especially in the southern Chinese. And so we believe there's some genetic susceptibility to that as well. Um, and of course, the Epstein-Barr virus in itself does have oncogenic properties. That means it can cause cancer. So uh, in itself, there are uh, reasons for it to be associated. And as part of research which is ongoing now, um, in collaboration with the National University Hospital, and with ASTAR, specifically Genome Institute of Singapore, we are looking at the association of EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, and nasopharyngeal cancer. Right. right the, the actual study, the use of this treatment for nasopharyngeal cancer, uh, this is the first time you actually have uh, this actually being studied. What made you and your team think that this might be an area you would want to focus on? Well... Um, nasopharyngeal cancer is an Asian endemic cancer and it's a, really a cancer which has been um, not so well uh, studied and not so, where drug development has not been so well uh, defined. Um, for the many years, um, chemotherapy has been the backbone of treatment and it's only recently that things like immunotherapy and now dual immunotherapy um, has been investigated in this particular type of cancer. So, uh, you know, the National Cancer Centre Singapore, we'd like to uh, try to address uh, Asian endemic cancers because we believe that there is a therapeutic uh, disparity uh, in terms of drug development and in terms of the available uh, treatments for such cancers. So there are challenges to understanding just how well we can address the issue, which clearly is very prevalent. I mean, you've had some success now with dual immunotherapy. Uh, but what other areas are there to be researched around this? And, and what, do you, what are the biggest challenges that you're facing with that? Great question again. Um, well, firstly, I think, obviously, not everybody responds to immunotherapy or even dual immunotherapy. And um, we need to understand um, who responds and who doesn't. And even for those who respond, they do develop resistance over time. 
and we also need to understand why. Secondly, um, I think we need to further drug development for this cancer. We need to have more clinical trials in this area, and this is where we are actually now initiating a fair number of clinical trials with immunotherapy in combination with other novel therapeutics or with chemotherapy in this particular area. And thirdly, of course, if we can understand um, how this cancer comes about, perhaps that can aid with diagnosis and screening for the cancer at an earlier stage of disease. You say you're carrying out more clinical trials. We are, as Dawn mentioned earlier, at the second phase of clinical trials from here to people actually finding this immediately available for them should they need it. What kind of timeline are we looking at? Um, I think as a clinician, uh, I certainly would like to think that you know, patients who have access to these drugs. Um, we know that these drugs have already been proven to be useful uh, and in clinical use now for kidney cancer, for melanoma skin cancer. Um, so the, the pathway from research to clinic could be shorter. Um, this combination is safe and is feasible to be used in patients. And uh, I think right now, um, the, you know, it's up to the regulatory authorities and the pharmaceutical company in question uh, to um, come up with what needs to be done further in terms of additional trials or the generation of additional data for it to be approved. All right. Thank you so much uh, for coming in to uh, Thank you very much talk for us the through that. And uh, all the best with this a dual immunotherapy treatment. Uh, Associate Professor Darren Lim there, Senior Consultant at the National Cancer Centre Singapore.